Good morning, good morning everyone. Welcome, welcome to this live broadcast of the official funeral of the late Charles James. Uh, Mr. James' uh, body is currently lying in state here at the House of Assembly in Glen. I'm Sean Rose, Director of the API, and with me on set to take you through the proceedings this morning is Mr. Anthony Denny, Manager at VC3. Thank you very much, Sean, and a pleasant morning uh, to all uh, viewing this official funeral here, of course, at the House of Assembly in Glen, as uh, certainly the official viewing um, will commence uh, shortly, of course. It um, was due to begin at 8.45, we just about a couple of minutes late, uh, but nonetheless, uh, that process will continue. First of all, we'll have the members of the family uh, viewing the body and they're already here with us uh, uh, this morning and then from 9 a.m. Uh, we will have uh, the Governor General um, Dean Susan Duggan. Susan Duggan of course uh, uh, viewing the body to be followed by Prime Minister Dr. Alvaro Alfie Gonzalez the leader of the opposition members of Parliament members of the diplomatic corps uh, will also be here uh, to view the body um, that goes up until about 10 a.m. this morning, and then right after, uh, from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m., members of the public will be invited to view the body here at the House of Assembly here in Glen. But uh, Charles James, Charles Cornelius James, would have served this uh, country uh, for about 10 years in the House of Assembly, first and foremost uh, between 1974 to 1979 as a nominated member, of course. 78, uh, yeah. 74 to 78. Exactly. Yes. 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 Um, as a nominated member of, yes. uh, of parliament, and that was during statehood. That's right. And um, then we made a transition as an independent nation, and he served from... A senator in 79. All the way up to 1984. That's right. And then he was the former governor general's deputy acting as well in 2011. Served alongside uh, Sir Frederick Ballantyne, the late Sir Frederick Ballantyne, who's gone on to the great beyond. Um, but, you know, a, a gentleman, based on what we just said, who certainly would have made a tremendous contribution to uh, the whole matter of uh, the um, parliament here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, of course, uh, served as a member of the St. Vincent Labour Party under uh, former Prime Minister, the late uh, Sir Milton, Robert Sir Milton Cato, and, um, uh, as I said, would have uh, done human service uh, to the people of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Sean. Denny, Mr. James, the man I knew, and I knew very little of him because uh, naturally uh, he born in uh, 1936. Um, by the time we, we grew up, he was already an elder in the society. Um, and he has lived to the tender age of 88 years, um, a long life. But this gentleman was always so distinguished. In fact, we are seeing now the arrival of Prime Minister, Dr. The Honorable Ralph Gonzalez. Uh, he's uh, greeting folks on the lower floor and he's been escorted into the chamber to proceed with the viewing uh, here this morning. So the Prime Minister, Denny, is right on time. Well, he's, he's very much early. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, he's appears just about to um, view the body is that the case or is he just uh, filing past well given the, the the order of the protocol usually the governor general would well the family would yes, actually that's correct with the viewing first yes. and then the the, the state officials would, would take uh, lead from there on with the governor general and the prime minister and so forth but I was making the point that the Mr. James, he is someone who was really a community-oriented person. And not just community-oriented, <laughs> but um, a farmer, a father, a friend, naturally a family man, a husband, a grandfather. But he was someone you could have had conversations with, especially in the area of politics and governance, but just any subject matter. Uh, it's a, he's a gentleman who read, well, he was a gentleman who read very widely. Uh, currently, we are seeing on screen uh, the, the casket still open, but just across there um, where the family members are seated, Danny, that's Natalie James, yes. one of his daughters, 
and uh, folks may know her because she works at the Tourism Authority here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. A former, a former work at the former National Commercial Bank, now the Bank of SVG. Yes. Um, as a matter of fact, a former co-worker of mine, ah. um, Natalie James, and of course, uh, there on screen is... Uh, Charles James the II. Second. <laughs> yes. yes. That's his wife. On uh, screen now, Mrs. Yvonne James, that's the, the widow, the wife of... Mr. Charles James, and uh, just behind her are the family members, uh, her soft son, her first child, uh, Anthony, Anthony James. Anthony James. Uh, escorted her back to her seat, and we have other family members and, and uh, well wishers who are, are viewing at the moment. As we spoke, I, I, I did notice that some other family members who folks can see now on uh, in the in the strangers gallery area where the family uh, is gathered, who also um, went to to view the body, and you could see the emotions, Denny. Uh, without a doubt, um, solemn look on the face, and, and there you see a teary-eyed Charles, Charles James, James the III. Third. Yes, um, grandson of the late. Uh, Charles James and uh, certainly a um, moment uh, for the family um, where they will be reflecting on the life of uh, Charles James and uh, the emotions quite naturally shown yes. um, you know, will be one that will evoke a tear or two and, and we've seen a bit of that here this morning. Exactly. And that's the point I was making then that this gentleman was so loved and so cherished and he was so engaging um, seen members of the Macmillan family there from South Rivers who have joined and and usually if you go down the family tree you will find a lot of um, areas of, or intersection points where people actually relate to each other by marriage or, or um, distant cousins and so forth but outside of that Mr. James was really a remarkable man. Uh, yes indeed um, as you said I, I no little of, of him personally, um, but the fact, of course, that he would have served this country uh, for almost a 10-year period, um, first as a nominated member and then as a senator from 1979 to 1984, um, certainly says to us that uh, a gentleman who was dedicated to the home out of national duty and um, having had the confidence of the government of the day um, to yes. have served for so long, it, it, it's an indication that um, certainly his, his service was well was. Um, well taken, so to speak. Yes. And outside of his service at the national level, as I was referring to earlier, he was a dedicated farmer. And a number of uh, farmers and folks who are viewing now who, can, who may recall the Charles James that they knew in his active years would recall that he served as uh, on the Banana Growers Association. He was on that he was involved with the farmers, groups, and, and organizations, and naturally helped to, to expand our export of, of bananas out of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, but not just at the level of the farmer, but also integrally involved in the management of the, the association from a farmer's perspective, and had a strong voice in the, uh, the, the various general meetings and so forth. Um, so yeah, Miss Mr. James and and folks who know him very well would attest to this. Is someone who is simply a dedicated national, a patriot of Saint Vincent and the Grenadines. Well, um, there's a body lying in state. Uh, we are waiting the arrival of uh, the Governor General, uh, Dame uh, Susan Duggan, and uh, of course the family would have already uh, had uh, their viewing of the body. And uh, following the arrival of uh, Governor General Dame Suzanne Duggan, quite naturally we'll view the body and that will be followed by other officials, including Prime Minister Dr. Alvin Siles, Leader of the Opposition and Members of Parliament. Um, pretty much indeed a, a solemn moment uh, here this morning at the House of Assembly in Glen. Uh, but just to let you, our viewers, know, um, right after the viewing, there's going to be a procession yes. um, leaving the Parliament building here in Glen all the way up to North Union. Um, our cameras, of course, uh, will be there to um, bring to you live uh, the body as it makes its way up to the uh, New Testament Church. Yeah, New Life Ministries, New Life Ministries right Church. 
in, in, in North Union. Yes. And now we've seen the arrival of uh, uh, two female members of the uh, cadet corps here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. And uh, certainly um, looking quite uh, splendid this morning, uh, John. It's very sharp, the formation. It's, it, uh, it exudes discipline, order, and just perfect in terms of the alignment and the the fact that they're there to guard the casket and to be part of this very important national ceremony this morning uh, in honor of the life of Mr. Charles James. Uh, you, you have to commend as well all of the folks who get involved in, in the layout and the decor uh, of this type of setting for official funerals despite the solemnity of the event you, you you get the sense that there's something regal about it well i believe we we're now having the arrival of the governor general she's right on time uh, making her way now into the house of assembly here in glen just filing past the speaker of the house of assembly the honorable rochelle ford and uh, of course uh, in close assistance of course uh, dwight uh, Dwight Thomas, uh, or, or, that, or is that Rogers? Well, nonetheless, uh, Governor General James yes. Susan Duggan now signing the book of uh, condolence, and uh, as soon as she's finished, quite naturally, we'll uh, officially view the body of the late uh, Charles James here at the House of Assembly uh, in Glen. So, Excellency signed the attendance register and she's proceeding now to, to view the body. And having done so, the, Our Excellency is now moving across to greet the family. First, she's greeting the widow, Mrs. Yvonne James. And sobbing there is Anthony James. And she must, and she knows all these folks very well. I'm pretty sure. Uh, Charles James the second, and Natalie James, and right next to her is her husband, uh, Silvano Schott. And of course, a renowned uh, farmer would have made his contribution. There we now we see Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gonzalez, not yet on screen. Uh, but he's actually signing the book of uh, condolence as uh, Governor General uh, Dame Susan Duggan uh, continues uh, quite naturally interacting with members of the family. And uh, uh, Prime Minister Gonzalez just a while ago would have signed the book of condolence. And uh, we await other members of parliament. Uh, there should be. Uh, be the leader of the opposition and to be followed by other members of parliament here uh, this morning and uh, there you see Dame Susan Duggan having spoken with the family uh, and now being um, moved to a location where she quite naturally will uh, have a seat and uh, continue to view, view the proceedings here at the House of Assembly. So it's a very smooth flow uh to the proceedings this morning and currently Sorry. Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gonzalez is also uh, taking his turn to view the body and Charles James is someone the comrade knew very well uh, without a doubt um, certainly would have and there you see Prime Minister Gonzalez uh, greeting uh, the widow of the late Charles James, uh, Mrs. Yvonne James, and uh, quite naturally other members of the family. Uh, they're still that uh, solemn look, uh, quite naturally. Anthony James and, uh, of course, Natalie James, uh, right next to her. I believe that's her husband. Her husband, Silvano Schott, yes. Right. And uh, Prime Minister Gonzalez, of course, continue. Uh, greeting members of the family. Um, this is a, a joint broadcast here this morning, of course. Uh, API 
uh, VC3, and uh, it's also available on the platform of NBC Radio. And uh, there we see PM Gonzalez. Uh, that's that's the character of the man. Yes. Um, being able, even at this time uh, of uh, solemnity, being able to evoke a smile she out of the family. Yes. Have a light moment, and and if you if you were to get that close, you probably might hear him share uh, a story about one of his encounters with Charles James. Certainly, certainly. And um, uh, widow uh, Mrs. Yvonne James is uh, really wrapped up in the conversation there with Prime Minister Dr. Al Gonzalez. And it, it, it shows that, of course, in, in these times, uh, quite naturally, it's very important, you know, that you celebrate. Yes. And you, you remember the good times, uh, Sean. That's right. Uh, and there are other family members there, and whether direct or by way of relations, uh, the lady who is, uh, her name evades me at the moment, but she's standing right there next to Mrs. James. Uh, she is the daughter of, uh, I beg your pardon, she's the mother of the daughter of uh, Anthony James. And we would hear from her later on, I believe at the church service, because she was unable to, to arrive to make the trip here to St. Vincent and the Grenadines and she submitted a video to it to express her own uh, emotions and, and send her greetings via the electronic medium but uh even as we speak and prime minister gonzalez continues to engage the family members in particular mrs james uh we can see directly behind them wrapped in in, in much attention there is uh Charles James III, yes. and next to him, his sister, uh, who, who is standing just behind Mrs. James. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm sitting here, uh, and uh, I should not say in awe, but uh, the, the, the way in which, you know, PM Gonzalez, uh, quite naturally in this um, moment, being able to certainly... Uh, bring the family to a situation where th there's a look of happiness. Um, we saw the, 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 the video before, um, you know, where they were moved to tears and, yes. and there's still instances where, you know, the members of the family are wiping a tear or two from their, from their eye. Uh, but uh, PM Gonzalez, as you said, um, in his in the engagement here this morning, certainly would have reminded uh, the family, especially the wife, Yes. of uh, Charles James of some of the good moments good That's times right. um, you know that and he personally would have had with him and then he has the Prime Minister left right on screen other members of the James family All right. uh, from the Chapman's area on the Windward side of St. Vincent and the Grenadines of course that's where Mr. James hails from the Chapman's village is, a, is known for uh, for being the home of the James family for the most part uh, so it is it is really a a very uh, large and, and respectable turnout here um, for the official viewing this morning. And we are anticipating a much larger turnout, of course, uh, in the New Grounds area for the church service. Well, there we see on screen the Speaker of the House of Assembly, the Honorable Rochelle Ford, uh, meeting uh, members of the family here this morning at the House of Assembly. And uh, have uh, quite a solemn look on her face, uh, uh, Speaker Ford, as she retreats to her chamber uh, here at the uh, House of Assembly. Uh, but uh, nonetheless, um, doing her duty and uh, meeting the family of the late Charles James. Of course, uh, a Governor General's deputy and would have uh, served alongside the late uh, Frederick Ballantyne. Um, you mentioned him, of course, uh, his, his, his service, you know, with regards to the farmer. Um, but outside of his parliamentary years, 1974 to 78 and 79 uh, to 1984, um, still continued indeed to, to, to serve the people of St. Vincent and the Grenadines uh, from a national standpoint, being the Governor's General Deputy. That's right. Uh, Denny, this gentleman, and we have a number of uh, photos to share with viewers for those who are viewing online those who are viewing on our respective uh, television platforms channel 16 and channel 14. Uh, 
born on September 6th, 1936, and passed away on the 21st of February this year. Mr. Charles James, he had 10 children. Uh, so you, based on the folks we've seen there this morning, we can tell that uh, some of them are not ac uh, actually there this morning. But he, he has, by way of the 10 children, 34 grandchildren mm. and 30 great grandchildren. He only had one brother and one sister. And if my memory serves me correct, I think we just saw um, his brother as the prime minister left the area where the family is gathered, um, that Mr. James from Chapman's. Uh, but like I said, you know, you, you grow up sometimes and you see these folks and not until at a funeral, sometimes you recognize who are the family members. Well, um, that's so true. And um, him personally, of course, uh, I would have had a, quite a large family, and it's, it, it says who the man is, you know, with regards to you know being a family man. And we saw it yes. here this morning, um, Sean, as uh, members of the family, um, they were here and consoled each other. Yes. And you saw that unity, so to speak, and yes. uh, I guess it's a testimony of the fact that Charles James uh, certainly would have served his family well. Indeed, in fact. Anthony James and I see you guys share you share a name there. That's wonderful. Yes. So already you have some comradery building up there. <laughs> you met him for the first time. Yes. But he is one of your avid listeners on your various programs on radio. He lives in New York, Anthony James. And he would visit his homeland. He would come home on a regular basis just to see his dad. So prior to Mr. James's passing in uh, February of this year, February 21st, Anthony was here, he was here for the Christmas period last year. And so you get the sense of, or you can understand why he's so emotional. The extent to which they, they converse as a father and son and the relationship, very, very close and respectable, yet the, the, the nature of it is still daddy. And he would refer to him as daddy. Um, and they all do that. I, also missing here this morning is Lincoln James. Um, Lincoln James, I know he attended the St. Vincent Grammar School. I'm not sure um, if you're familiar with him, but he, I'm sure, is also quite emotional, and that may explain his absence here this morning, uh, because it's not always easy to come to uh, a place like this when you're in mourning. Uh, and, and, and well said, Sean. Um, I personally, you know, um, uh, would have had, you know, my moment, you know, with, with regards to what is actually happening to this to this family this morning, um, and it's, it's it's not it's not the best of times, so to speak, to 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 a bit farewell yes. um, to one who would have uh, served uh, family and nation with distinction, um, you know. So quite naturally, we we well, from my personal standpoint, I I certainly understand the position that you know the the James. Sorry, the, the Charles family are in at this point in time, and you mentioned a particular member of the family who is not here, might not be here because of a certain rational reason, so to speak, and, and, and that is understandable. Yes. Uh, uh, but nonetheless, of course, um, uh, those who are here this morning, as I stated early on, we, we've seen you know the unity and, and they they stand you know with each other um, quite naturally in in this moment of bereavement, and now we see. Uh, the Member of Parliament for South Windward, uh, the Honourable Frederick Stevenson, uh, now signing the Book of Condolence, and right behind him, of course, uh, Member of Parliament for West St. George, the Honourable Curtis King, um, not at, well, yes, on screen. Yes, actually. <laughs> and, and will soon sign the Book of Condolence. Yes. And um, so far, we haven't, I think earlier on we missed, or, or did we, the Speaker of the House, Honorable Rochelle Ford, we, we didn't, family members. We, as didn't, well. we didn't miss her. So, just in case <laughs> <laughs> um, viewers didn't hear us expound on that too much, but um, we have seen so far the, the, the order in which the state officials would appear. Yes. Uh, we haven't seen the leader of the opposition at this point. Uh, but to return to the Honorable Frederick Stevenson, who is Actually, the well, that's an interesting point because given where Mr. James lived, I think he would be a resident of the South Central Windward constituency. Yes, yes, that's correct. Whereas right across from the stream, 
that that runs down in front of his property would be would be the start of the south windward constituency which naturally would be the area uh, that honorable stevenson is in charge of and stevenson is greeting the family now again um he he knows the family very well um and this must be a very difficult time for him as well to come to grips with the passing of of one of this nation's uh, pillars, one of our nation builders, on whose shoulders we all stand as we continue to uh, build out this great concept of a small island nation that is small in size but great in stature. Well, uh, there we now see the Honorable Curtis King, Minister of Education, the Member of Parliament, uh, representing the constituency of uh, West St. George, uh, uh, viewing the body of the late uh, Charles James, uh, former Member of Parliament, and uh, he will now go to greet the family, first and foremost, the widow, and uh, other members of the family here this morning at the House of Assembly. Uh, we certainly um, await other members of parliament uh, to file ca pass the casket here at uh, the uh, House of Assembly in Glen. Of course, a temporary um, arrangement with regards to the House of Assembly. And uh, may I say, Sean, it's, it's my, actually it's my very first time here at this temporary facility. Well, I shouldn't say a temporary facility because right, right after it's, there's another purpose yes. uh, with regards to this particular facility. Um, but... Um, I'm pretty much impressed as to, to what is here at Glen Sean. And the, the bar has been raised. In, in fact, what this, this very production, we are able to do this in the manner that we are doing it because of the spacious layout of this, uh, this, this uh, facility and the accommodation is quite suited for this type of creative uh, and yet informative and necessary production given the nature of, of the exercise that we are overseeing this morning. Um, it is easily accepted by all that an official funeral or state funerals ought to be done in this manner. And before we've had to make adjustments, and Dion and, and Colvin, usually who Colville, who are usually the ones yes, <laughs> hosting yes, these, yes. have had to, you know, um, jump through hoops basically to bring live broadcast. And um, well, they've had a very busy week, Dion and, and Colville, and. Um, They've been very active with Heroes uh, Month activities. The Honorable Sabuto Caesar is on screen, yes. member for South Central Winwood. And as I was saying earlier, um, well, he's the Minister of Agriculture, Fisheries, and this, I'm sure, means a lot to him. Coming here this morning, signing the, condolen the Book of Condolences, and, and seeing uh, the late Mr. James one last time before he goes home. Um, of course, again, Honorable Caesar would know this family very, very well. Very close relations, I know, friendly relations. And uh, already I can sense that it's quite emotional for him and as he sort of held his breath there for a while before he moved up to the casket, Denny. That look of uh, uh, solemnity, that's uh, the Member of Parliament for South Central Windward, the Honorable Sobota Caesar, Minister of Agriculture. Fittingly, of course, um, uh, the late Charles James, of course, uh, uh, once a farmer here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and uh, of course, uh, Minister of Agriculture, Parliamentary Representative for South Central Windward, the Honorable Sobota Caesar. Uh, just uh, meeting members of the family here this uh, morning. And his composure as he proceeds to greet other members of the family. Again, I'm sure that he knows everyone there so well. In fact, he is now seated in the area, in the Strangers Gallery area, to. I may, I, I may say, uh, Richard Gass, the house matters it might very well be a strange area uh, for the, the Honorable Sabota Caesar. Um, but uh, we certainly, you know, continue here uh, this morning at the House of, Assemb uh, of Assembly. Uh, on screen, of course, uh, it's uh, members of the family, uh, the widow, Mrs. Yvonne Charles, 
Uh, there you have Anthony Charles, uh, the brother of uh, Charles James, and next to him is uh, Charles James the uh, second son of uh, the late Charles James, and uh, immediately to uh, well, his left on the screen is uh, Natalie James, uh, of course. Very much so, um, Sean. And uh, the proceedings indeed continue here this morning. We are waiting other members of parliament uh, to file past the casket. Uh, we've already seen the Governor General, uh, Dame Suzanne Duggan, Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gonzalez, uh, has already um, filed past the, 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 the casket and also signed the Book of Condolence. Uh, so, to the Speaker of the House of Assembly, uh, thus far, as Richard Gass, some members of Parliament, we've seen the Member of Parliament for South Windward, the Honourable Frederick Stevenson, Parliamentary Representative for South Central Windward, the Honourable oh, yes. Saboto Caesar, and we await other members of Parliament uh, to uh, file past the ca casket here this morning. Um, also, there will be members of the Judiciary uh, as we continue the protocol, yes. uh, members yes. of the Diplomatic Corps, and uh, visiting dignitaries here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Indeed, and... It's very likely that we would see others uh, coming in. In fact, we, we did send a note to Honorable Caesar to join us. And what I may very well do, Denny, uh, in fact, uh, Caesar is, is, is arriving at the moment. We would, we would w welcome him to the, to the set and let him share uh, a bit with us about the life of, uh, of Honorable James. Y you know, as, as the... The technicians prepare to, to welcome Honorable Caesar. Denny, I, I can share this with you. The area where Mr. James, the late Charles James, gathered a lot on a Saturday morning is just a stone throw away from, from where Minister Caesar grew up. Mm. And right in that area was a butcher shop called Albi's Butcher Shop. And if anyone could recall the conversations that took place there, they would note that it was more than a butcher shop. It was pretty much a, a university of sorts, the level of conversations. And the, you would leave, as you wait in line to buy your, your beef to take home for, for, for mom or grandma, depending on who sent you out, you would learn so much standing there in line, simply listening and waiting. And I'm sure Minister Caesar, he too has had his experiences um, here in Honorable J um, the late Charles James. Honorable Caesar, welcome. Thank you very much. And I wish to, to greet all who this morning following the funeral. We are here to celebrate the life of a, of a great man. And uh, I can recall as a, a youngster growing up between Diamond Village and San Susi on a Saturday morning, going to buy your meat at Albi Butcher Stall and seeing the, the different gatherings. And one thing you knew about Charles James, wherever he stood, there was a conference. Yes. And I could remember men, George Rodriguez, blessed, memory, also the late wires would be there and persons, some going to Congo Valley, some persons stopping off to, to buy their meat, bigger red from, from larders. And at that time, it was the height of the banana industry. And he was a man always of the people and for the people. And as I grew older, I started to, to recognize and to have a better appreciation as to what these conversations were about. And I can remember when I entered the parliament at the age of 27, someone asked me, have you gone to speak to Charles James yet? And they said so with great instruction. And I remember going to his porch because at one time it was by the butcher stall. And then his 
porch was a veritable university. And as I sat there, he went through the different contours of the constituency and traced from as far back as the 1930s and told me what pertained in each village. And I must note that my, the possibilities and opportunities that I speak about today to the constituency, many of them were given root to in conversations that I had with Charles James. But it would be remiss of me if I do not also mention the post AGMs that took place when you had the, the, the Banana Grass Association AGM. And I remember my dad will come home about seven, eight o'clock and he will sit with my, my mother, Valerie Caesar, and we'll be there in the, in the living room and he will give us ball by ball coverage. So what took place at the AGM? And you would hear the names of Bucky Boy and the fact that he had called for Banana Bank. And you'd hear about Charles James and the fact that when there were issues arising for the advancement of the farmers, he was always at the forefront of the advocacy to ensure that farmers got a better deal. He would definitely be missed. And, um, you know, his, his family, his, his wife, I remember going to the house and you know, traditionally when you go to a house, you sit down and within five minutes you get a glass of, of sorrel. <laughs> or they offer a glass of ginger beer and you sit there and, and you spend a whole day. You don't go by Charles James' house and leave in 15 minutes, Sean. Not at all. No, it's, uh, if you go there for nine, you most likely will be around for lunch time. You stay for lunch. You stay for lunch. You stay for lunch. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I just want to come in here at this point in time because I, I want to take you back to that butcher stall scenario. Yes. And um, to say to the people viewing, ultimately the nation, what are some of the um, memories that immediately jump out? You being a, a, a very young, uh, upcoming supporter Caesar, what are some of the things that really um, are registered in your mind, so to speak? I share the similar experiences that, that Sean mentioned. And I, as Sean noted, I live right above the butcher stall. So on a Saturday morning, when I was very young, age three, four, my mom would hold my hands and walk me to the butcher stall. But by the time you're five or six, she write it down on a piece of paper. <laughs> and she give Sometimes I remember at the age five, six, the, the, the counter at the butcher stall was so high by Albi. <laughs> and you couldn't see above the butcher <laughs> <the> stall <laughs> counter. So somebody had to say, you have a little one here, no? <laughs> and they'll take the paper from you yes. and pass it to um, Albi. And Albi will tell you, well, you know, you can't get all the meat and you have to get some bone. Not like we don't, we, we don't sell spare ribs and, <laughs> and ribeye here. You get some bone and you get some of the meat. And it was a, a place where by you heard about what was happening in the village. Yes. You heard about what was taking place in the church. You heard about what the principal was doing in the school. What was happening in agriculture. And I remember Denny. The, the, the main discussion taking place there, two issues, politics, number one, and agriculture, number two. Indeed. And uh, there, there was an interwoven one between politics and agriculture. And uh, it was a, a whole day affair. Persons would go there, persons like Charles James would arrive there from about eight o'clock. And when we are going to play soccer, at North Union. And Charles yes, James, I'm still there, wow. four, five o'clock. Wow. And then Albi would have the barbecue. And then Albi had introduced a, a little dance thing after. So the, 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 the crowd of Charles James would leave before the music. They don't sit around for the music part. And these are men who dedicated their lives to having these meaningful discussions. In some countries, you call them the local government. Because it was from those discussions, and I remember they, they, they renamed the, the butcher stall, the parliament, because of the, the, the level of discussions that were taking place there. And uh, I think it's, it's really encouraging that we are reminiscing, but we must not only celebrate and, and reflect, but we must also take a page from those chapters 
And as we advance the cause for national development, we have to go out in the ways and the byways, not only in parliament and, and not only sometimes when you go on a stage and on a platform, but we have to ensure that we meet at these places because it shows and means a lot for connection. Minister Caesar, the late Charles James, he was also an influencer. Yes. And you spoke of the, the fact that when you entered politics, folks asked you, have you spoken to Charles James as yet? As though it was a rite of passage. You had to go and speak with uh, Charles, Charles James, James or yes. else you weren't really taking this seriously. No, no, no. If you didn't go to Charles James School of Political Education, <laughs> you, you, you were not having a passing grade. <laughs> In your case, it was also um, significant beyond that huge family in the area and there are so many interconnecting points with other families well i would not go into any great depths into what some of the lectures were <laughs> 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 but you know I, I must also say this too that james has left a legacy and you you know the sons and daughter very very well and when you listen to the children speak yes you you know that they were schooled in speech giving they're very articulate they they're very straight to the point and these were some of the characteristics of charles james he would think he would pause and whenever he comes up with an idea it would always be well received i've never heard him in a quarrel i've never heard persons in any way disrespect him in public. In fact, I've never even heard anybody say anything about Charles James in my entire life. Yes. <laughs> Persons always saw him as a man who is in charge, a man who understands and appreciates, and a man who is loving. Senator James uh, was all part of uh, the agricultural belt here in yes. St. Vincent and the Grenadines. You know, being Minister of Agriculture, uh, my question is what, what influence for that matter, how would you have had from the interactions with, with Charles James? He, he would always explain to me the importance of agriculture to rural development. And we have to always appreciate that the DNA of the socio-economic fabric of our country is closely tied to agriculture and particularly the, the demise of the the plantation economy and Charles James was very instrumental in working with persons as the growth of the peasantry to form to own a piece of land we have to remember you know that in the days of, of slavery and in the early period of peasantry as a son or daughter of a rural community owning a piece of land was almost impossible and what Charles James taught us is that you could do work could perform duties you can till the soil you can plant the bananas and you can have an income and you can become bankable and you can purchase a piece of land and build a home for your family and uh, this is part of the independence the the appreciation of our own sovereignty, the coming alive of <clears throat> our, our villages. And uh, today, we do not have a, a single major crop, as he would have experienced bananas. But we have a very diversified production platform in agriculture. And uh, we are certainly going to, to continue to ensure that agriculture continues to play a critical rule food security food must always be available affordable and accessible and now I'm talking about food security you don't ever leave sister James's yard without taking a bag of something I saw a sap she has there some plum rose some wax up pine some peppers and it was part and parcel of the the growth of rural communities and how persons interacted between families and sharing and caring was a critical aspect of that building on the shoulders building on the foundation laid by the late charles james this gentleman 
he knew practically everyone in the community then he, mm. and he was also a disciplinarian outside of the home so you saw as james and i had to check my steps and i know as we speak at the moment we are awaiting other members of parliament who would join this uh, presentation this morning and i'm they too must have had their own experiences um with respect to their interactions with with uh, mr james well caesar um before you leave us from here we go all the way to new grounds to New grounds yes and then to the san Susi cemetery so uh constituency south central winward in attendance and my love to the entire family thank you so much thank you so much for sharing with us uh this morning minister caesar great having him uh, and it's really a pleasure having you viewing and or listening via nbc radio viewing on, on bc3 api on facebook and channel 16 channel 14 uh, the public information network at work as we continue to expand the, the level of coverage that we, we, we can provide here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Well, well Sean, um, I was really and truly engulfed in the conversation relative to the whole matter of uh, uh, the, the, the influence that uh, the now Member of Parliament for South Central Windward uh, the Honourable Sabota Caesar uh, would have gained, you know, with regards to the conversations at that particular butcher shop, and he spoke um, extensively on the whole matter of uh, Charles James's uh, involvement in the whole matter of agriculture. So, yes. you know, that was for me particularly very, very absorbing, very interesting. But we're now being joined by the Member of Parliament uh, for the constituency of uh, West St. George, the Honourable Curtis King, Minister of Education here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Uh, pleasant morning to you, Minister. Uh, I know it's a moment of uh, reflection and solemnity, so to speak, um, but here's your opportunity to uh, say to the people of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, indeed, um, those moments that you recollect, so to speak, uh, having interacted with uh, uh, Mr. James. Thank you very much, Brother Denny, Sean. Pleasant good morning to our viewers, listeners. Yes, it is a solemn moment, but it is also one for great reflection and in many respects. Here we are basically reflecting on the life of a nation builder. You know, throughout St. Vincent and the Grenadines, you have these persons who have done tremendous work at the community level to the extent that they help to solidify communities and your community is better for the fact that these persons are around and would have made a significant contribution i think that is the way we have to look at charles james although it is our very important to say that he moved beyond the community level and served in the parliament of, of, of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Now, I know very little of Mr. Um, Charles James. I must admit that. What I know is what I heard. What you, you read about sometimes in the newspapers, especially during the heyday so to speak, of the banana industry, where you always heard about certain individuals who were significant in terms of their banana holding and, more importantly, their contribution to the development of the banana industry. So it is within that um, framework I know of Mr. Charles James. But, again, here was someone who during that period when the industry was, let us say, about to take off and ultimately during the maturity phase of that industry, this was one of those persons who played a significant role in ensuring that the farmers, the farmers had a voice and also that the industry itself provided the opportunities so that the farmers could make something of their life in a meaningful way in terms of what they were getting in return. And, and so 
you know, I, I just want to say to his family, it's a difficult period, yes, but I always advise that, look, take comfort when that opportunity arises where an individual would have made such an important contribution, not only to his community, but national development. I always advise that you take comfort in the knowledge that your lost one has made a significant contribution to the development of his community and by extension, his nation. And not only that, when a person lives beyond three scores, three scores and ten, you always have to say it is a blessing. Yes. And he had a, a, he was a wonderful soul. I, I mean, I was especially um, moved by what I heard from Sabot has left us. So I want once again to extend to the family of Charles James my condolences and that of my family and also to ask them to be strong in these difficult times. Of course, they will write it over. Well, thank you so much, uh, Minister of Education, the Honorable Curtis King, sharing with us uh, his own uh, personal emotions and expressions and understanding of who this gentleman, this nation builder, Mr. Charles James was. It's great having you, Minister James, and we really appreciate your comments here this morning because you've really commented, uh, Minister King, I beg your pardon, we've really, <laughs> we've really um, heard some, some moving tribute so far via this, this particular platform in relation to the life of Mr. James. So thank you again, Honorable King. Okay, and you're most welcome. Great having, it's great having this type of interaction, Denny. Well, um, of course, uh, the, we, we're now going to be um, having the presence of the parliamentary representative for the constituency of South Windward. Uh, meantime, of course, the casket uh, continues to, to, to lie in state here at the House of Assembly uh, in Glen. And, uh, of course, uh, Yolba Frederick Stevenson, pleasure having you here uh, this morning. Of course, we were just commenting on the fact, and Sean mentioned it, that um, the late Charles James's property is more or less uh, boundering with your, with your, with your constituency. Um, uh, but, of course, uh, a, a moment uh, where we will and we, we are going to continue reflecting on the life and the contribution made uh, by uh, Charles James. Uh, but here's your opportunity now to say to us and to the, to, to, to the viewing public um, what sort of impact uh, he would have had on you personally. Uh, good morning, Sean. Good morning, Denny. Good morning to the people of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, who are those at home and those abroad who are viewing this, this program this morning as we reflect on the life of Charles James. Uh, <clears throat> I have known Charles James for basically all my life. Um, growing up in the, in the little village of Cedars, um, he came down from we used to live up in Chapman's and he had lands up in an area in Cedars called Injun. Mm. And uh, as I was viewing the program, I, I listened to the Honorable Saboto Caesar, the Minister of Agriculture, when he mentioned the fact that going at Albie's butcher stall on a Saturday morning, you would meet guys like Charles James and Ralph, George Rodriguez, sorry. Yes. Um, two distinguished banana farmers then yes. in, in the heyday of the, of the banana industry. And uh, so Charles James and uh, George Rodriguez farm banana lands up in, up in what we call Injun. Um, those were the days when you, you saw truckloads of, of bananas heading out of, of that area and going into Kingston. Um, and as, as children growing up in, in the area there, you'd naturally, for the, the purposes of getting a ripe banana and, and, and some green bananas to cook, um, you'd go up to the, the, the lands on a Tuesday afternoon after the shipment day. Those days, and you, you'd pick up what, what was left over, what was not um, what they 
tart would have been the best thing to, to put in the boxes to mm. send to England. And those which were left over, the children in the community, also for food. Yes. Um, some of it was for, to cook for the pigs. Um, and you had some to, to write. So, I mean, those, those were the days. Um, and later on, growing up in life, uh, Mr. James would have played a very important and significant impact on my own, on my own life. Um, when I worked then at the magistrate's court in Kingston, um, with senior magistrate Errol Munzee, and they, they, they were the kind of individuals who would, would stop on an afternoon and they would have have their drinks as a youngster would be on the sidelines listening to the kinds of conversations they, they, they had in terms of the political development of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, international um, politics, local politics, community politics. And those were the kinds of individuals who I, I, I grew up around and, and I never failed to, to have great respect for, for Charles James. I don't quite but sorry, well, I don't know if you were part of the butcher stop, butcher shop, sorry, scenario uh, as Minister um, no, no, Caesar no, 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 has no. spoken about. <laughs> uh, but uh, quite naturally, listening to you, uh, there was a tremendous influence uh, by Mr. James on the community. I don't know if you care to lament on some of those things that you know jump out, so to speak. Well, I I, I recall going every now and again in those days. You didn't have um, the amount of money every Saturday to go and buy buy beef. So, and uh, in those days growing up, we came from very poor, humble families. You didn't have refrigerators and that sort of stuff. So when you, when you, when you go over to Albi then, and you, on a Saturday morning, it was a long line. And uh, Sean, if you, if you wanted to get through early, you had to get there very early. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because by two, three o'clock in the morning, the, the cattle was killed. Yes. And um, persons would be there waiting with their, with their little containers or tubing bag, as we would say then. And you'd have to stand in that long line and, and call for one or two pounds of beef. Mm. And, uh, but there you'd see these gentlemen sitting there and the conversations would continue, as, as I mentioned before. It's local politics, community politics, life, the banana industry. Uh, where could this go? Where would we take this? And I heard Sabo to mention also the fact that um, Charles James was one of the serious board members of the of the heyday the banana industry in those days. And we could recall um, persons like like Julian Bucky Boy, who at one time when the the banana industry uh, at a general meeting was told that they had over <clears throat> in excess of about. 20, 25 million dollars in the banana industry. Then um, the late Julian Bucky Boy suggested that there be a, what is called a, a, a farmer's bank mm. for the banana farmers in, in the country. And, and I, I tell you, as a little boy, because my mother grew up in the banana industry, she, she worked at the, the boxing plant in Bible. And as a little boy, I used to, to go there on, on a Tuesday afternoon from school, and you're not getting home until Wednesday morning sometimes because um, you had to be picking, washing, and then my mother was a packer, so you had all these banana trucks laden with bananas coming in, and, and sometimes I shoot down in the, in the little shoot that they had there with the box, <laughs> and so on, just to Interesting, keep yourself right? occupied. And, and, and uh, so, it was in those heydays when the, the banana industry was on, on a high that Bucky suggested. And I think, um, if I recall correctly, Charles James was a member of the board yes. of the Banana Association. Cross Industry Association then. Um, and the, the, the idea of the Farmers Bank really was, was something that I believe if we had started it then, we would have had still had that organization going, going, going today in terms of the diversification program that the Minister of Agriculture just spoke about. I mean, moving from banana into other short crops and other um, agricultural produce and that sort of stuff and so on. And, and I think it would have 
Oh, go very well for the farmers, the, the, the farmers in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Well, Honorable uh, Stevenson, outside of farming, Mr. James was a typical family man, but a very, very closely knitted family, the yes, James family. Certainly. Um, the the James, James family is. So Mr. James, his role in that, um, he continued to engage in community activities, national um, service, but yet remain very close to his family. Yes, I've, I've visited um, the home of, of Charles James on several occasions. Um, I, know, I know all the, all the, the children, the, the sons and the daughters with, his, with the wife. Yes. I'm um, from Anthony Bud James to Natalie to Barman to Lincoln Lincoln to uh, Ada. Ada and um, the last one is uh, Everett. Everett, yes, yes. yes. And I, I, I am quite familiar with Everett's wife who works at the Milton Cato Hospital there, um, Natalie. As we all know, is a very senior civil servant at the the Ministry of Tourism. Yes, yes. Um, um, but is is overseas. He then works at at, at Bradsa, and, um, and Charles James. And Charles the, James the second, Junior. Yes. Charles James the second. He yes. was a former senior civil servant at the at the Treasury Department in uh, a few years ago. But since migrated today. United States of America, and uh, that family has always been a very close knit family. Um, sometimes wherever you go, you you met more than one of them. Yes. Um, Bud would go out and, and have his name, and yes. Lincoln might be somewhere around. And, and it's and, a community uh, affair and, again, and and, and and that sort of stuff. So that they, that level of service, they follow the the footpath. Yes. The tradition established by their father in terms of community service, national service. And, 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 and Charles James, over, over the years, under this um, Unity Labour Party, was elevated to the, the position of, of acting Governor, Governor General's yes. deputy, yes. Aaron St. Vincent and the Grenadines, for his outstanding contribution to national development. Yes. And, and that is why we are here today, um, for, for the service he gave to St. Vincent and the Grenadines. His, his role as an entrepreneur, a farmer, um, his, his role in community um, development, his role in, in, in local government and the local politics of his day. He was a former senator under the um, Joshua John period, I believe. Um, I right be after. Corrected. Right after. Right, okay. Just, uh, 1974 to 78. 1974 to 78. Yes. 79, 84. And, um, and uh, as I said, he. He was an outstanding community man. He he enjoyed. I mean, I've never heard Charles James, and <laughs> as far as, as I could, as I go back, I never heard somebody call him Mr. Charles James <laughs> or Mr. James. Yes. It was always Charles James. Yes. I mean, that 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 the that, that, that shows. They, yes. They, yes. The, the respect that, that people have for, for the, the man that you, you, you'd call him by his, by his entire name, not, not, not as any Mr. James because you want to, to put on a handle, but Charles James as a mark of, of high respect and high regards. And so today, yes. um, we bid farewell to the, the life and, and the contribution of a, of a great Vincentius. Came from very humble beginnings and elevated to to uh, national, um, where they're basically the head <coughs> of statesmanship in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Um, his legacy will continue to live on in, in the lives of his of his children and everybody. I'm sure the name Charles James would continue to live on among the people of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and more importantly, in the community where he, he was born and, and, and grew up. And so I offer my sincerest condolences to the, the family and to, to say to them that Gustus is still there. Well, we're really, we're really happy to have had you on set. Uh, as we speak on screen, 
ladies and gentlemen, those who are viewing, those who are listening, we see Minister of Finance, uh, the Honorable Camila Gonzalez. He, he too is taking his turn at uh, viewing and I'm sure Camila himself knew Mr. James very well, given yes. the period that, that we are coming from. And he yes. would know the family very well also. Um, we do have... Uh, him and, him and Bam and whatever. Yes, and that's right. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So we have, we have with us uh, other folks who are ready to share. Um, what I would like to do at the moment is, is proceed straight to... Because I mentioned earlier, Denny, that Mr. James had one brother, Alfred. Um, James. So Mr. Alfred James is here with his wife, but Mr. James will come forward, Mr. Alfred James, the brother of the late uh, Charles James, and share with us briefly um, you know, a bit about his brother. Uh, and I would, I would allow him the liberty to decide where he jumps in. But welcome, Mr. James. I've known you all my life as well. And it's really a pleasure having you on set to share at this moment as we Celebrate the life of your brother. Well, as for me, <coughs> this I got to say. Life of great men all remind us and the part it leave behind him, his footprints on the sand of time. Now, Charles James, as my brother, he was a special man. Now, when it comes to the political side of life. He was just there. <clears throat> he has given himself over to work for people. And one of the things that rests in me and with me is that one day there was a kind of a problem rise up among certain people and this child James had a grain of banana wrap it up in a kerchief and he scattered the whole crowd <laughs> 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 so that always remained with me now and next time I am um, I believe that Charles James was born for a special time and the season. So, one day, I happened to be with him, uh, himself, and um, Mr. Joshua at the time, because that custom go with him. So they sat down in Mr. Joshua's home, his living room. And uh, we put a, a meeting together for Market Street. In those days, <clears throat> when you make Market Street, then you made it all. So, and by Market Street, we mean in Kingstown, where yes, all the political parties had the gatherings. To be. Yes. So when you do get there, you've got to be up and up. That's right, you're on Bedford Street. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes, in Kingstown. Yes, so... Now, I knew the plans we had because we sat back and we put ourselves together and when himself and Joshua get out to Market Street, it was something else. And uh, this was the meeting that we, as we are talking here, we just put together but it was properly done and the people accept whatever being said. So I believe that um, the family has lost a great man, a great political guy. Now, we came together. He was always the front man and uh, let me use myself as the backup man. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so, we made a plan how we're going to go about this same government that we have now. And the plan worked out. He, 
the, the one the government. He says to me, brother, I know that I won't live to see this government fall. I told him, well, me too. So we went on and things are still in the mood. When he passed, that was the first thing that came to my mind, that he's not going to live to see the government fall. So he predicted that the current administration would, would still last. be in power even after he passed on. That's right. So that is what happening now. There's a lot of things I can say, but it doesn't make sense now because we raised up together, we, are boy, we were boys together, and we lived together. And one thing, he was very honest in his politics. He will do everything possible to make sure that the side he support um, always be the winner. And most of the time it does happen. So Charles James is gone, and I believe that not me alone, but others are going to miss him, even in the political field, because he was a very good political political man. I'm and seeing I'm seeing and I'm sensing the emotion in you as well. I can see the tear that that you have been uh, trying to keep uh, from rolling down your eyes, but I know this is also an emotional time for you as a brother, losing your brother. Yes, because um, we all grew, grew up as boys. One type of people, if you hurt him, you hurt me. If you hurt me, you hurt him. So that's how we really raise up. And when I heard that he passed, it was a problem to me because I mean that's human being. Yes. And um, but one thing I do show that his testimony that he leaves behind, he has gone to a place of rest. And uh, may God continue to bless him as time will Lord. Uh, well, just one, one final question, and you, you kept lamenting on it, the fact that you both grew together, um, him being your brother. Um, you care just to uh, maybe give us a, a reminder of one important memory, uh, something, you know, in your mind that, that stood out, um, that, you know, remain very much a part of you today. One of the things that we that stand out in my mind is that his belief with God. He would always say to me, Brother, no forester, no witchcraft for me. I'm going to live my life the way that I can. So that's one of the things that really stand out for me is that no matter what you do for life, you make sure that Jesus becomes the fourth place in your life and things would be all right in life. Amen. Well, thank you so much. And that's, 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 that's really moving. Uh, Mr. Alfred James, ladies and gentlemen, but he, you and Charles, and there was a sister. Yeah, the last sister, she's in Canada all now. Remind us of her name. Victoria James. Wow. So the, the family so closely knitted. I know you and your wife so, so well over the years and um, still bonded and being there for each other at this very um, difficult moment, I'm sure. Yeah. So far. Wonderful. Well, we've been enlightened. We've been motivated. We've been informed by you. And we really, we're really happy to have had you on set, uh, Mr. James, sharing with us some of your personal encounters with your brother, the late uh, Mr. Charles James. We're going to hear from more as Mr. James um, says goodbye for now. Um, to, we, we'll send him to, to meet his wife and 
you would uh, yes. naturally make your way out to new grounds. She's right here with me at this yes. time. Yes, yes. So as we, as we make preparations to hear from other folks on set um, this morning, Denny, we would have the ushers come and assist Mr. James, um, who has been so eloquent and, and quite emotional. Certainly. Uh, in his in his deliberations yeah. certainly certainly it was very um you know um moving so to speak you know hearing him give some accounts as to you know what transpired in, in his early life with uh charles james but just to say that we've gone past the the, the period where um uh, members of parliament and the governor general would have drew, drew the body we know into that time uh, where members of the public uh, now invited to uh, view the body of the late uh, charles james here at the house of assembly in Glen. Uh, we're going to be joined on set uh, by Charles James III, uh, grandson of the late uh, Charles James, as he takes his seat uh, here on the set. And there you see on screen, of course, the casket bearing the body of the late Charles James. Uh, but uh, pleasant morning uh, to you, Charles Welcome. James III. Uh, I, I, it it's, must be very emotional for you here this morning. Yeah. Um, but what do you say um, as you reflect on the life and times you would have had with, 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 with Charles James? Just in the many short moments that I had with him, the summers coming to St. Vincent a few weeks here, he was always like the most respected and honorable man I've ever met and always will be. And I just, I, like in terms of his family, you will never meet a man that cares about his family as much as Charles James the first and carrying this na name, I want to make sure I do the same thing and honor that, honor him. Well, you've done remarkably well, uh, Charles James III, by making it here to St. Vincent and the Grenadines, because initially the expectation was that we would hear from you via um, a video sub submitted for, for airing at the church, and yourself and your sister, uh, Jalen. Jalinda. Jalinda, Jalinda, yes, you guys made it in, and I'm sure you're very happy to be here, to be in place, and now you're able to share with us and all who are viewing and listening. Uh, you are being heard on Channel 116, Channel 114, API, and, and VC, uh, VC3's Facebook pages, and also on NBC Radio at the moment. As a young man, walking in the footsteps of your grandfather, even at this difficult time, tell us what that means for you? Um, I just remember being on on his farm, just those summer memories. I just smile and laugh, even looking at the slideshow down downstairs. It was I just see pictures. He wouldn't even look at the camera. He'd just be looking at us like the whole time, and it was just the love he showed that. That made me feel at home every time I'm here, and that was special. You you basically spoke about um, more or less you embodying and maintaining the legacy of the late Charles James. In your mind, what are some of the things uh, you think you need to do um, to to achieve such? Um, it's just he always cared. That was the main thing, and he always worked hard. And he would tell me that over the phone. Uh, be a good man and work hard and follow in the steps of the Lord. And um, he would just always, always just tell me to be, be a good man. And, and I just knew he cared so much. So the values that he instilled in you and I'm sure all of his other children and grandchildren. Mm -hmm. uh, he, shit. Yes. I'm sorry. It was um, hearing about him as a politician. I just knew him as always sitting up on his porch on his chair. I didn't know too much about what he did as a politician and for St. Vincent, but I just knew what he did for every single person in his family and how he always cared and tried to do the best for them and seeing how much he did politically, I was like, that just sounds about right. That's who he is. Well, we know you live in the United States. Um, 
Share with us the, the, how does the distance uh, affect or did it at all your relation with your grandfather, um, given the fact that you adore him so much? Um, it, was, it was pretty tough. We talk on the phone time to time, but I remember him just telling um, one of the hardest things was not being down here more. We used to come every summer, but um, it was uh, just talking on the phone. I wish I, I could have gone down here, see him more, spend more time here, because he, uh, he was special, and those moments were special, and I'm glad I have the ones that I do. <laughs> but the distance, uh, I, I wish I got to see him more. And there's a lot of his family out there Canada, um, even the United States too, England, that also love him too, and uh, yeah, just wish wish I got to be down here more, spend more time with him. Well, I'm happy that you made it here, Charles James III, and you're you're part of a legacy. Yeah. This this concept yeah. of Charles James the first, the second, and the third, exactly. um, it's really something that that is commendable. And we wish you a wonderful day as you, you celebrate the life of your grandfather. I know it's a day of mourning as well, but you're, you're naturally yeah. celebrating as well. Celebrate it, carry on the name, and just everything, all the values he instilled, that's, that's always going to be something I'm going to do. All right, well, thank you so much. Um, from you. both of us here, our sincere condolences on the passing of your granddad. And uh, we are doing our bit here to share and to celebrate his life share um, some of the moments that you are relaying to us with the general public, all of our viewers and listeners, and also to, uh, to, to, to celebrate um, the life of a nation builder, Mr. Charles James. Well, as Charles James III leaves us, we, we, we will make way for yet another family member, uh, Mr. Rashan James. Uh, he's here and he would like to share as well. Um, all morning, we, we've been quite um, gender biased, I must say. It's, it's, for the most part, men, men are sharing. We haven't had the opportunity to have a, a lady on set. It would be great um, to hear um, from a lady, but you know, sometimes it's not easy. We do make every effort to ask people to come on uh, and to, to share when we are uh, having a broadcast of this type. But the emotions, Denny. Uh, certainly. And um, uh, what came out there with that uh, convo there with uh, Charles James III, uh, he spoke about not physically being here to, to, to have you know, that interaction, but immediately one picked up the fact that, that there was still that influence. Um, and, and technologies of such these days that, you know, um, uh, you, you're there... <laughs> Uh, basically, um, but the emotion that you know came out here this morning from young Charles James III as he spoke about falling in the footsteps of his grandfather and uh, highlighting the fact that you know he one of the things that he instilled in him is a whole matter of um, maintaining that fellowship uh, with with the Most High, and we heard it coming out from 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 his brother also here this morning. It says to us all, you know, that is one of the the, the main pillars, so to speak, that the late Charles James would have used to, to, to keep his family together. And, and for me, that, that's absolutely remarkable. Definitely, Denny. Well, again, we are welcoming Rashan James, uh, again, another grandchild of the late Charles James. Share with us your experience with your granddad. What, what does this moment mean for you? Oh, boy. This is, this is one of the saddest moments I could ever think about. Most people might know. Most people know my grandfather's charge, James. But to we, to we, grandkids and everything, but he was a great man. And I, like, to me, you know, he was a king. How did he influence your life on a daily basis? Let's talk about that. Uh, on a daily basis, he always did forget some positive advice. Every time I walk going down the road, all, all I have to do is grandfather. And he has something to say before I leave. Make sure we be on the right path, something good, always something positive. It's one of the saddest moments we ever think about. And having that role model in your life on a daily basis, speaking positivity into you, 
uh, what do you see going forward now that he's gone? How, how do you, how can you uh, continue to make best of the advice that you've had? Uh, all I have to do is speak of the advice and make sure walk in the right path, walk in the right way. One thing, Charles James, uh, my grandfather, you have so much I could say, but last in words. And we truly understand because this is a very emotional period uh, and it must be for you, given the tightly knit, knitted nature of the family. Oh, um, yeah. Your mom, how, how is she coping with this? She's good. Well, she's watching the live. I so. said, give us the name of your mom, by the way. Linda Dabrio. Yes. From Park Hill. And my father is Lincoln James. Well, I'm very familiar with you, with both yeah. of your parents, uh, as, as a matter of fact. Mm-hmm. Um, but again, you spoke this morning about the, the way in which your grandfather would have molded you, the advice that he certainly would have um, you know, given to you uh, almost on a, on a daily basis. And, and, and that, for me, stands out, um, certainly. And that you know, is, is really and truly who the, who the man was. Um, but, you know, going forward, life continues uh, quite naturally. And um, in your mind, um, how do you use uh, what your grandfather would have shared with you to, to continue that you mold and shape your, your life in such a way um, that you remain on that straight and straight path, so to speak? Well, boy. Huh. We understand the, the emotions here this morning. And um, uh, certainly, um, Sean, it's, it's not one of those easy times, so to no, speak. No, and we've, we've alluded to that earlier, uh, that when, you, when you've lost a family member, especially when the, the, the ties are, are this close and you, you saw this person, as Rashawn said, as a king, you saw his grandfather as a king, someone who spoke positivity into his life on a daily basis, clearly you're going to get emotional and... There are a number of things that you would like to say and you would just be embroiled in that state of, uh, of, of sadness that you, you wish he was here with you. I really wish because on the day when he passed, right? He passed like around six o'clock, me, my brother, auntie, father and grandmother was home. And like for the past half an hour, everybody like checking. Yo, make sure, make, uh, show you guy, grandfather passed. Like for half an hour straight, everybody, my brother, go and check. Make sure, like, he was really like shock. Yes. Because the morning he was tip of the top, mm-hmm. full of energy. Uh, and then he just gone. Oh, uh, that's interesting. So Mr. James was full of energy, to use his words, even on the very day of his passing. Mm-hmm. And that's the person that we knew. Yes. Uh, Mr. James to be a man, a very energetic personality, very engaging. Well, Rashan, it's really a pleasure having you. Um, we're happy that you've you've shared with us. We we are going to ask uh, one of your your cousins, cousins now to join us. And fortunately for us, Denny, we'll have our first female this morning, uh, Jalenda James. Uh, she's the sister of Charles James the Third. And these are, these are children of uh, someone we know affectionately as Barman, Charles James II. Uh, they, and we know they reside overseas, and um, they made that extra effort to arrive here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines uh, for this special occasion, this solemn occasion. But none, nonetheless, this very important um, activity to celebrate the life of a nation builder. Jolanda, welcome. Thank you. I appreciate it. Well, it's great having you on set. Uh, tell us about your interactions, your relations with your grandfather, Mr. James. Definitely. I mean, most of my life, there's been a few hundred miles in between the two of us. Um, but I think it, the respect and the love that his family has for him was something that was apparent to me from the very beginning and um, I just know every phone call we had it was to the point but also he always knew what I was up to and I knew the last question I would get was okay when are you graduating and I was like 
<laughs> okay. And um, it didn't it didn't dawn on me that I graduated in 2021, um, and so our, our conversations changed a lot more, and they were a lot more fun and affectionate beyond then. But I think it, it became clear to me in more recent years that his his driving force is really that everybody in the family was, you know, given the opportunities that he didn't necessarily have in the very beginning and made for himself, um, and that they were taking advantage of those opportunities and, and bettering their life. Um, and I think it's clear in how hard everyone in his family works, especially in, you know, down to the generation of, of grandchildren, uh, that that was instilled in, in everyone, even me from hundreds of miles apart. Um, and I think it's uh, it's a testament to how much he loves his family that he would be so invested in and so um, happy about every aspect of, of my success in life and, and even going forward. Uh, you, you spoke about uh, him mentioning to you on many occasions and asking the question if you have graduated and also mentioning the fact that the conversation would have changed after you graduated. Was it a scenario or situation where um, he was somewhat of a disciplinarian and um, really pushed you to ensure that you, you achieved uh, that degree, so to speak? I, <laughs> this is gonna sound weird, but I, I never gave anybody trouble in school. <laughs> so I don't think I was ever disciplined. Um, so maybe that's why our conversations were, were pretty uh, executive and to the point, because luckily nobody ever had any uh, anything to, to say about me in terms of, uh, of academic performance. I was a bit of a nerd. That's what I like to do is go to school and read. So probably to a, um, probably to a fault at many points, but that's, uh, that was at least my one thing is I didn't give trouble in school. But there would have been some type of influences. Having interacted with him, uh, though not in person, but as you lamented on, on, on the phone, there would have been some degree of influence. You, you care to mention such? Definitely. I mean, my entire family, mother's side and father's side, but especially my grandfather, they hold education in such a high regard. And and I think the difference between me and other children in school, especially in the U.S., is every time I think about a test I have coming up or, or a program that I want to apply for, um, like my driving factor is the fact that I get to go back and, and tell my family that I did this thing um, that they work so hard for me to have the opportunity to do. And I think that's probably what has driven me to where I am today and probably will carry me forward. So even if not in a disciplinary uh, frame of conversation, it definitely did push me harder every single every single time I thought, you know, maybe I don't have to study, maybe I don't have to go here to school, maybe I don't have to apply to this job. Um, so I would say that even if not having to, to yell or, or uh, discipline, there was definitely an expectation of success, I would say. And on occasions when you visited, as we can see, we've seen already on screen, uh, your grandfather was obviously, as I'm sure he loves all his grandchildren, but he clearly um, showed the love for you and, and the, the affection, um, grandfather and granddaughter, that is quite visible on photo. Um, the, the times when you visited, what was what were those experiences like? I, I think he's just a very comforting person. I know he definitely has a lot of drive, a lot of energy, but every, every conversation I've had with him, at least, it was more pulling up a chair and just sitting on the porch and talking. Um, and he, of course, cared a lot more about what I was doing. I tried to ask questions about his life and, and stuff like that, but he more so just wanted to know what I was studying, how I was doing, what my grades were, of course, um, and then just talking about the family. And so I, I just remember peace and, and comfort when talking to him and being handed more fruits than I know what to do with. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And your grandfather, he, he was an avid farmer. He was a community-oriented person. Your perspectives on his life, his legacy? I mean... It's it's intimidating in many ways to live up to to someone who's left such a mark on um, on the the country and, and even beyond the country. I think um, any space I go into that's a, a Caribbean place, I say my name and the the name James comes and the first thing I get is Bamandata and I'm like, 
yeah and then <laughs> it branches off so quickly and then um you know it's almost as if i'm walking in someone else's legacy in a way of of living a life where someone knows so much about you and has a, such a regard for you because of of someone who walked before you is um it's a humbling experience but also it, it goes back to the the discussion of what drives someone forward um to be successful because i know that in many ways the way we walk um today represents him and everything he wanted and so it's up to us to maintain both that legacy and 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 just the reputation he's cultivated with um within the country and beyond once again uh, mr james was a former nominated member in the legislative assembly 1974 to 78 then a senator from 1979 to 1984, and this is, of course, the post-independence period, and a former governor general's deputy acting in 2011. Um, we are celebrating his life here today, ladies and gentlemen, uh, for those of you who are viewing on our API and VC3 platforms, uh, those who are on channel 116 and 114, and those listening by way of NBC Radio. It's great having you, and with us on set, uh, Denny and I are chatting with uh, Jalinda James and she is of course the granddaughter of Mr. Charles James, the late Mr. Charles James. From here on, as you celebrate the life of your grandfather, I know there are going to be those emotional points and you'll remember the fond stories and the experiences. How do you envisage uh, celebrating his life? In terms of celebrating his life, I think just making sure those memories are not lost and that we don't remember to, to speak about them. That's the thing that held our relationship together for so long, only because we were so far apart. Um, and so making sure, you know, if I have kids one day that they remember him because he is such a pillar in the family and he will always be a person who everyone in this family should know. And we owe him that, um, not to stop those conversations, not to stop telling those memories um, so I think just carrying the name forward, carrying, you know, his existence forward from, from here on out, generations beyond. Great, great hearing from you, Jalinda. And Denny? Well, um, uh, certainly a, a lot uh, being said here this morning by family members of the late uh, Charles uh, James, as we certainly remember uh, the life and times of a, a gentleman who served this country um, certainly with distinction, as you would have mentioned, from 1974 to 78 as a nominated member of parliament in 79 to 74 as a senator, of course, uh, us having attained independence in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. But my final question um, uh, to uh, the young lady on set here this morning, um, did his, or do you think that his political life uh, would have interfered in any way um, with his family life? I don't think so, no. I mean, he has a very large family and, and certainly a lot of us to, to wrangle at any point, but I think it's a testament when you, when you think about the fact that every single one of us has memories with him, even me and my brother being so far away, the fact that we were a priority for him. Um, and I never felt like it, he didn't love me as much or that he didn't care for me as much, even, you know, being a, a seven hours and probably a couple connections of flights away and and so i think that was always going to be a priority for him and and it's a testament in the amount of people who are heartbroken but also filled with love for him today is i don't think um i don't think that would have ever interfered with his ability to to show the love he clearly had for his family very well and we thank you uh, very much uh, for sharing uh, your experiences with us here this morning on set and of course, uh, we wish you and the, the family all the best uh, moving forward. Appreciate it. You're welcome. So the proceedings continue here this morning at the House of Assembly. As we remember, uh, the life of uh, the late Charles Cornelius James, former member of Parliament, uh, of course, and uh, some very interesting um, uh, revelations here this morning. Indeed, John. indeed. Um, and hearing from the family members is pretty much hearing from the horse's mouth. Uh, and you, you, you're you, getting the sense that everything that is written or has been said about Mr. James cannot be di disputed. Factual, 
proven time and time again every time someone sat here with us this morning. All right. Well, we're approaching that uh, 10.30 hour here on a Saturday morning. Um, the body still uh, remain lying in state and uh, members of the general public uh, have up until 11 a.m. this morning uh, to view the body of the late uh, Charles James. You would have seen some members, uh, of course, uh, file past the, the casket here this morning. Yes. And, um, of course, uh, just about another half an hour remaining. Um, Sean, uh, right after, indeed, uh, the journey will be uh, to up to, to... Up to new grounds, new grounds. to New Life Ministries. Uh, we journey on to new, uh, new Life Ministries. That church right there at the, the Gap in New Grounds, right after the Golden Rock gas station that has been uh, inactive within recent times. Um, the, we, I understand that the, the person to deliver the sermon, uh, the message there for that uh, funeral service would be former member of parliament for the South Central Windward constituency, uh, the Honorable Selman Walters. Okay. Uh, Mr. Walters, and as far as I was advised, again, the church service will, would follow grace and truth uh, rights. So uh, Mr. Walters would officiate at the, at the uh, funeral service there. Walters, Mr. Walters, naturally. And I do recall seeing him at the James uh, family home as well. He knew the family very well. And Mr. James, uh, Charles James would have naturally played an integral role in his political life and, and more than likely in his, in his life outside of politics as well. Um, so we are anticipating a large gathering there. On screen, the Honorable Minister of Health and Member of Parliament for the Maracua constituency, the Honorable St. Clair Jimmy Prince. Yes, uh, just uh, completed signing the Book of Condolence. Uh, he's also there with his uh, uh, wife, uh, Minister of Health, the Honorable St. Clair uh, Jimmy Prince. And uh, well, in any moment now, uh, we'll be filing past the casket to certainly view the body of the late Charles James. Of course, a casket uh, draped to the national flag of uh, St. Vincent and the Grenadines. And Minister Prince will now uh, move over to have that greeting, uh, so to speak, with members of the family. And uh, there you see the widow, uh, Mrs. Epon James, just having a brief moment there with the wife of the Minister of Health. Yes, and the lady next door, I just recall, is Sharon. Uh, um, I recall the first name. Uh, Sharon, as I indicated earlier, she's the mother of a child uh, with Anthony James. So, uh, but you, you, you've you noticed that uh, the, the children and uh, grandchildren, for the most part, they've, they've left the, the chamber at the moment. Yes. They're more than likely making their way out to the church, um, having endured for the most part this session this morning because it's never easy um, sitting at a, a place like this whether it's at a church or or you are at a, the here at the house of assembly and you are being greeted by folks who are extending their condolences to you and sharing with you and and empathizing but do observe the demeanor the strength the courage the tenacity that you see on the face of the widow, Mrs. Yes. James, on screen at the moment, having a conversation with the wife of Honorable St. Clair Prince. Uh, yes, um, absolutely no doubt. She, she's really, truly been a tower of strength here this morning. And I believe that embodied the fact that uh, the late Charles James um, certainly, you know, um, would have, from a family standpoint, um, he instilled a lot, you know, within the family. And, and I think it's understood this morning, whilst the emotions um, will certainly, uh, you know, be up and down, so to speak, uh, that uh, they choose this moment, this time, to, to, to remember uh, the positives and, 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 the, and the great influence, so to speak, that he would have had over the family. I heard coming out this morning, the, the whole matter of that spiritual belief, and it came from every single one uh, who spoke, uh, you know, relative to, to, to Charles James and embodies the fact that um, he was pretty much God-fearing yes. and uh, that he didn't, he didn't keep it to himself. He certainly ensured that it is something that transcended throughout his family. 
and the influence of this nation builder, the late Charles James, extended beyond the boundaries of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. As Jolinda said, thousands of miles away, she felt the impact of her granddad on her up- upbringing, her socialization, um, her value system. And uh, naturally, you, you would expect that. But in, when you're hearing from the, the persons themselves who are part of the family, who are a part of the family and who are impacted by his positivity, you, you get a greater sense and a greater appreciation of how impactful he was as an individual. One of the things, uh, you know, being a community-oriented person, being somebody who's actively involved in the political uh, side of life, so to speak, um, you, you tend to get or you hear, um, you know, the family's um, suffering, so to speak, um, either in presence or uh, for one reason or the other. But we didn't get that coming out in the message from family members this morning. Not at all. In, in fact, what, what we got, we heard about um, an abundance of fruits always available. And even at a time of mourning, the, and I keep referring to this, the closely knitted nature of the family remained intact. And you, you really had to appreciate um, that, sen- that sincerity coming from the family members. Well, on screen we have uh, Senator Israel Bruce, opposition member of parliament, uh, signing the book of condolence here uh, this morning. And of course, he's the caretaker for the New Democratic Party in the constituency of South Central Windward and uh, uh, will uh, be making his way uh, to view the body of the late uh, Charles uh, James. And uh, there he is now, uh, looking quite solemn, Um, Sean. Yes, and um, again, uh, Senator Bruce naturally um, would have known Mr. James very well. Uh, Mr. James was a tower of strength in the body politic of South Central Windward. And anyone who is involved directly or indirectly in the body politic of that particular constituency naturally would, um, would have had some sort of interaction or appreciation for the life and work of Mr. James. Uh, we have someone signing the book of condolence. I, I'm not too familiar with the individual, uh, but uh, Might be a member of the, member of the public, public coming, in, com- coming in now to to participate in the proceedings and here we have others coming to uh, sign the book of condolence and to file past the the casket and to to view the body of the late charles james so there you saw well and he still continues uh, senator israel bruce uh, just to share some moments with uh, members of the family meantime uh, we have more members of the public uh, coming in here at the House of Assembly to, to sign the Book of Condolence and, of course, to uh, view the body of the late Charles James, former Member of Parliament, uh, would have served for just under 10 years, uh, first as a nominated member under the whole statehood system and then as a senator uh, prior to us gaining independence uh, here in St. Vincent and Grenadines in October, on October 27, 1979. It appears as if uh, that lady... Um, who you said you had no idea uh, might well be uh, a member associated with the family or co- close connection uh, with the family. Uh, but um, our camera's just roaming around the, yes, <laughs> yes. the walls here of the um, House of Assembly. And in giving us a, a view that the, the viewers may not always get to see at the time that we see. So I note, I note just minutes ago, I noted that. Uh, Officials on the floor were looking at their watches. I get the sense that we may very well be preparing to uh, close the casket at some point. But it depends on what the the, the file is like okay. on the outside because we, we can't see on the outside at the moment. And well, at we, the moment, we see we see an uptick in, in persons yes, who are coming see, in. Because I, I recognize this gentleman uh, who's there with a lady whom I'm not too familiar with. But Lance, this gentleman is from Hadley's village. Uh, and these are folks who knew uh, Mr. James very well, probably worked with him, or in some way uh, he had an impact on their life. All right, so members of the public continue to sign the Book of Condolence and uh, filing past the casket bearing the body of the late Charles uh, James uh, here this morning at the House of Assembly here in uh, uh, Glen. 
and it is certainly a very solemn moment. Uh, it is likely, screen. Danny, that we, we may see family members who we are not too familiar with coming in during this particular time. Um, given the size of the family, a very large family, of course, uh, there would be other family members that we are not too acquainted with who may very well be uh, viewing. Doing so at this point in yes, time. Yes, yes. Very well. Um, just to say to folks that uh, this broadcast will go up until about 11 o'clock. Uh, that's when the um, viewing of the body will come to an end. And at that time, the body certainly will leave uh, the House of Assembly here in uh, uh, Glen Calico and uh, head up uh, to uh, the New Life Ministries uh, Church in Newgrounds where the uh, official funeral will take place. It's scheduled to start at 1 p.m. And uh, following that, the internment will take place at the San Susi um, Cemetery. Yes. Uh, it is worth noting at this point as we get closer to to that, uh, that, that period of the procession out to, San, to uh, New Grounds that Assistant Superintendent of Police, uh, Adrian Francois, he is the one charged with the uh, managing the official proceedings here from the police side of things. Uh, so he should be uh, the man at the front there um, because we know there'll be a, a procession from the New, New Life Ministries Church, which would be about half an hour or so uh, along the Windward Highway out to New Grounds. So this again, you have to commend the members of the Royal St. Vincent and the Grenadines Police Force and the the RSVG PF band, uh, because they would be leading that 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 procession. Uh, Sergeant Thomas, we were advised earlier, uh, he's the one in charge of the pallbearers today. And I do I do recall seeing uh, Inspector Wilmot John as well earlier on, assisting um, with the uh, the movement on the floor as the members of the Royal St. Vincent and the Grenadines Police Force brought the casket in to the chamber. Let's, let's not forget um, the, the good work this morning from uh, the members of the um, cadets um, who certainly uh, would have uh, done their drills with precision uh, here this morning. Um, uh, and there we see, well, it's not on screen, but um, uh, they're now changing uh, yes. the, the, the guard, so to speak. Yes. And uh, it's really um, breathtaking uh, looking at the precision in which they, they're doing it. Well coordinated there, yes. Sean. And speaking of coordination, we, we also uh, can commend at this time the, the production team, the folks who you don't normally see who are involved intimately in, in a broadcast of this nature. Uh, Antonio Richards and members of the team, Robertson, and Etienne, and Duncan, um, and so many others who are involved in a production of this nature. Um, it, it, it takes a lot of work to, to prepare for and then to actually execute this activity throughout the entire broadcast and beyond. Yes, uh, more members of the public uh, filing past the casket here this morning. And one observation, it appears as if um, uh, persons uh, coming here to uh, the House of Assembly in Calico, uh, but it appears as if they already um, prepared and dressed themselves for, for the funeral service. Yes. So they, they've come here to Calico, which is a fair distance from, from New Grounds. Yes. Uh, but of course, reflecting the importance of being here um, to, to certainly uh, view the body. Exactly, exactly. And um, I, I get the sense that while the name Charles James may have uh, been quite known, among a number of individuals and a number of people who know him personally. They are those who also heard of him, but yes. never got to, to know him personally. And um, I think this particular exercise is now refreshing some memories uh, here and there, refreshing some memories, but also helping to, to share with a number of folks uh, about the life and, and the, the, uh, the service of Mr. James beyond what they ever knew, what they've ever read. Well, a um, uh, service that you know transcended many areas, and um, specifically the whole matter of the um, banana um, 
a system here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. We heard the Member of Parliament uh, for South Central and Woodward uh, speaking extensively on how many times he was advised <laughs> yes. uh, by Charles James on the whole matter of agriculture and specifically bananas. We heard it coming out, of course, uh, from the Member of South Windward, the Honorable uh, Frederick Stevenson, and no doubt um, an influential farmer. So he, he just didn't do farming um, for Charles James, as per se, yeah. uh, but made his contribution and ensured that he touched as many lives as possible that surrounded him. In the same way he served as a nominated member in the Legislative Assembly and as a senator in the Parliament and as the, de the Governor General's deputy, he was also a farmer on behalf of the nation. And outside of that, his interactions in the community. In fact, his brother Alfred indicated and he shared a very important piece of history. The way they planned a political meeting at yes. the Market Square in Kingstown, yes. right there between the, the Bank of SVG area and, and, and Kingstown Central Market. Right. Um, simply during a conversation with the late Ebenezer Theodore Joshua. Well, um, you know, back then, um, you once you made your mark in, within that particular era yes. she certainly would have arrived and that's what he said too <laughs> <laughs> well, there's no there's no question as far as yeah. that is concerned because i can recall my, my late father alfonso denny yes. um uh, certainly having his moment uh, there right at that particular yes. spot um where quite a lot of uh, meetings would have, would have would have taken place and 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 charles james certainly would have made his contribution then that's right. And we're talking about the epicenter of Vincentian politics, the, the Market Square area. No longer um, popularly, popularly used for, for, for major political events, but nonetheless, the history is etched in stone as it relates to the importance of the area and how many people have had their impact on the nation standing there on a platform and speaking to large audiences. Well, his preparation, and specifically Charles James, would have come again, and I was really and truly sucked in uh, when Minister Caesar spoke about uh, that um, butcher, butcher stall, yes, um, you know where it more or less was a university where everybody from the community came together and shared uh, aspects on matters relating to the community and and, and everything basically. Yes. Um, so in actual fact, um, he would have really and truly grasped a lot from from there to take it into Kingstown. That's right. In the Market Square, where he delivered to to to, to the masses. Because that's that's where I first knew the man. Journeying from Mount Grennan to that very same butcher stall to, to, to purchase beef. And as Caesar said, during your time there, waiting in the line, 15 minutes, half an hour, sometimes more, um, he, for the most part, was the most audible. And everyone listened to his point of view. And he, was, he always sounded so right, yeah. so compelling, but so informed. And you got the sense that he was widely read. Initially, that was my, my, my interpretation of it. Later, I would confirm that. He listened to the radio, an avid listener to radio programs, um, and followed not just local radio programs, but you know the BBC and other bulletins that you got back in the time. So the transistor radio or a book, those things were always ever present in the life of, of Mr. James. And that is not unique particularly in his case, because every one of his age group tended to display that type of uh, consum consumption pattern of information. Always listen to their transistor radio, always had a book, in some cases the Bible or any, any magazine or newspaper they can get their hands on. So it, what we heard from Minister Caesar was really moving and it was history being recorded in oral form here this morning as well. One thing that I, I think um, will remain with me and I'll uh, say to you this morning is the fact that despite being so community oriented, yes. uh, despite um, having made such a significant contribution on the political front, Charles James did so quietly yes. and there wasn't any great fanfare um, coming from the man, so to speak, and it, it shows the fact that this was done. That's a very important point, Denny. Selflessly, so to speak. In fact, Denny, we've heard from family members that Mr. James was not very fond of taking photos. Yes. And we've seen that in the photos. You look at the photos and you realize he wasn't really looking at the camera for the most part. Uh, and they've, they were actually concerned that they may not have had enough photos to share with us so we can share with our viewers. 
Um, but fortunately, thanks to the cellular phone, of course, there were a number of them captured. And he always kept that demeanor of, uh, well, I'm here, but you don't really need to take my photo. It's okay. But fortunately, they captured some very um, striking images uh, to, to see Charles James as he, as he lived in real life, in action, in love with family, in love with his community, in love with his country, a nation builder. And today he's being celebrated as we prepare for the official uh, internment, the, the church service and the internment later on. Well, uh, we about what some ten minutes bef before the eleven o'clock hour. At that time, uh, the viewing of the body uh, will come to an end here at the House of Assembly in Calliope, and then the procession uh, will leave. Uh, we will certainly maintain the live pictures here on API and BC Three as uh, the um, hearse will leave uh, the the House of Parliament. Of course, uh, carrying the body of the late Charles James, heading up uh, to. Uh, new grounds at the New Life Ministries uh, Church and uh, we will also bring to you live coverage of uh, the funeral service uh, to take place uh, at that wonderful facility. Exactly and uh, we anticipate a large gathering there. Uh, I've seen the setup. It's just outside the, well, across from the New Grounds Primary School. Um, I saw tents outside and the setup is, is really, again, regal and quite fitting for the individual uh, we, we, are, well, we are celebrating today. In fact, it's good to remind folks that Mr. James was born on September 6th, 1936, and he passed away on the 21st of, of February this year. He had 10 children, 34 grandchildren, and 30 great-grandchildren. And he grew up with one brother who we met and we heard from earlier, uh, Alfred and the sister, I recall the name was Victoria. I believe. Yes, Victoria, who resides in Canada. Um, so the legacy of this man beyond the individual is phenomenal. Large family, large footprint on the body politic of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, a large uh, footprint on the, the farming and agriculture industry, generally speaking. But on Vincentian life, right? a large footprint and someone who we can, we can look to as a true nation builder. And in the, this month of Heritage Month, we can celebrate him as one of our heroes. Well, it's interesting that you mentioned because immediately jumping into my mind was the whole matter of transitioning from statehood to independence. Yes. And Charles James was pretty much a part of that journey as in Vincent and the Grenadines, of course, uh, um, said to Motherland England um, yes. that we're now moving into that stage where we want to be an independent country, yes. so to speak. And for him, being part of the whole matter of the, 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 the parliament, um, the decision-making body uh, here in St. Vincent and the Grand means um, very much important embodied who, who the gentleman, who the man was. Because you can really hear his voice championing the return of our pride and governance to our nation, a legacy that was disrupted by British and, and basically colonialism, uh, the brigandry of, of, of Europe, land stolen, um, lives lost, a, a genocide committed here on our soil, um, our, thousands of our Garifuna, Kalinago people um, forced off the island and, and eventually had to reside in places like Rotan and Honduras right. and, and spread that throughout is, the region. Exactly. Right. Yeah. You know, that disruption that must, that it caused to this nation. So yeah. I can imagine hearing the voice of Charles James saying, time for the British to go. We, we can be self-governed. We need our own government, our own decision makers in our own parliament to chart the course of our own country and not some external forces telling us what and how we should we should uh, govern ourselves so so maybe it's fitting uh, he's been laid to rest two days after national heroes day in st yes. vincent and the grenadines where we celebrated the life and time of our national hero joseph chatier who championed the whole matter of self-independence yes. he really and truly put his life on the line as far as that is concerned and maybe this is just uh, as i said fitting uh, that charles james who no doubt based on what you said 
uh, would have helped to champion the cause of us, you know, becoming an independent nation, um, be the later rest around this time. Yes, and he, he spent time around the greats. Theodore Joshua. Yes. Robert Milton Cato. No doubt. And James Mitchell. Uh, every leader of this country, I'm sure, has had to, to greet Mr. James and extend the same level of respect and, and honor that we, we have seen and heard throughout the day. And naturally, as we've seen in the photos, he and Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gonzalez enjoyed a very close relationship as well. Uh, absolutely. And um, it just embodies the fact that this is a gentleman who um, spread his wings yes, uh, far and wide, so to speak. Uh, we have, um, well, uh, yes, more persons uh, coming in here to, to sign the uh, Book of Condolence. Um, I believe that is a, a member of the general public. Um, again, a tied uh, in a way that um, gives you the thought that you'll definitely be attending the funeral. In the background, the Honorable uh, Leader of the Opposition, the Honorable Gordon Friday, um, uh, a little late this morning, but nonetheless, he is uh, present here at the House of Assembly and uh, now signing the uh, Book of Condolence. And uh, uh, after doing so, certainly we'll no doubt go across and uh, have that interaction uh, with the um, members of the family remaining here at the House of Assembly. We know for sure that the widow still remains. That's uh, Mrs. Yvonne uh, James yes. and uh, the leader of the opposition um, on picture, on screen, I should say, uh, will now file past uh, the casket bearing the body of the late uh, Charles uh, James. And uh, as the leader of the opposition uh, now view the body, of course, coming out this morning, we, we get the sense that, and you said it a while ago, uh, that um, he is a gentleman who would have um, certainly um, well, touched all political spheres and would have interacted with, with, with um, different political parties, so to speak. Yes, I, I think the, the, the global mindset that he possessed allowed him to do that. He, was, he, he wasn't restricted and he didn't allow anyone to restrict him in terms of his views. Naturally, he had his uh, political perspectives and uh, we see that uh, some of the family members are still here. Uh, well, the children who we thought uh, left actually, uh, Charles James II and Natalie James, they are still here. Uh, and uh, at the moment, the, the widow, Mrs. James, uh, she's not, not seated there in the chamber. but. So as they're being greeted by the leader of the opposition, uh, Dr. Godwin Friday, and he's being, well, Dr. Friday is being assisted by Senator Bruce, who earlier did um, file past and, and did the very same. But um, Mr. James was, was really, as I said, uh, a, a man for all seasons. And he, his perspectives on life, politics, and religion, was that befitting of a global citizen. So it was quite easy for him to interact with anyone, irrespective of their political allegiance, notwithstanding the fact, knowing the man, that he held his ground and he defended that um, with empirical evidence um, with, in, in, uh, with respect to his political position uh, or, or his allegiance. Uh, and you, you have to commend that as well. Without a doubt. Well, we're getting close to that time where um, the official viewing of the body uh, will come to an end uh, here at the House of Assembly uh, in Kalekwa. And uh, uh, that being the case, uh, pretty close to wrapping up uh, this broadcast uh, here. Uh, but nonetheless, as I said early on, it's, it's going to continue as we uh, view the procession heading up to new grounds. And um, Sean, certainly it's, 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 it's been a morning where you saw the emotions, yes. you saw the terror or two uh, coming specifically from, from, from family members, but you felt um, the fact that it was an occasion certainly to celebrate as family members remembered the, 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 the wonderful time, not, uh, no doubt, yes. that they would have shared with the late Charles James. And it's, it's a really uh, important moment to be a part of and to, to celebrate and to, to give or lend a shoulder to those who mourn 
and and to share the information about this uh, gentleman, this nation builder for those who didn't know him very well and for those of us who simply had um, passing interactions and and wished we knew more and, and wish we had more time to sit and hear him. In fact, you know, I do recall uh, at the API, we were considering having a conversation with him just last year and family members mm -hmm. told us why that was not necessarily a good idea at the time. But he was actually interviewed and we were looking for that file footage. Um, so we know it is in, is in our possession okay. of Mr. James uh, speaking to one of our API uh, members of staff. Um, so the, the, the impact that he has had will not be lost at all, even after today's um, activity, after the proceedings here today. We, we naturally would continue to, to find ways to, to honor him. At the moment, Denny, the casket is, is closed as we are uh, viewing and observing at this point in time. And um, uh, of course, the national flag will once again fully drip uh, the casket. The pallbearers uh, will move into place and uh, uh, they will uh, ensure the moving of the casket uh, from the House of Assembly uh, into the Hurl Statue journey all the way up to, to new grounds. Well, I would like to commend everyone who who are a part of this activity today. Again, we see Inspector Wilmot John there um, leading the draping of the casket. Um, members of the House of Assembly, uh, the government officials in the Office of the Prime Minister, the Minister of Foreign Affairs, um, the state officials across the, across the board who are involved in an official funeral of this nature, um, the, the, the time that goes into the planning and the preparation to ensure that everything is done befitting the stature of the individual and the, the appreciation that the nation has for their tenure um, is really quite commendable. And as I've said before, you, looking at it, it, it's quite regal and it's quite appropriate and it's in good taste. And as sad as the moment is, there are moments of joy as well as you observe the proceedings. So any moment now, uh, we should see the official pallbearers, of course, members of the Royal St. Vincent and the Grenadines uh, Police Force uh, will make their way into the House of Assembly and uh, assist with the removal of the casket bearing the body of the late uh, Charles uh, uh, James, uh, we would have had some moving uh, moments here this morning at the House of Assembly. Uh, we also would have had some some moments where um, certainly the wonderful and extensive contribution uh, by Charles James to the uh, South Central Winwood community and uh, ultimately uh, to this country, St. Vincent and the Grenadines uh, would have been laid on the table, so to speak. Um, I remember. Uh, although not on set here this morning, but Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gonzalez, his interaction uh, with the family, yes. um, where moments before there were many um, who certainly were teary eyed. Yes. Uh, but Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gonzalez, with, in, with his interaction, being able uh, to, 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 to bring out some laughter and, and, and some joy from the family members. And again, very likely he shared a story or two about his encounters with Mr. James. Uh, two countrymen, two men who grew up on the political battlefield and who must have had their, their interactions and whose values, I'm sure, are consistent with that of any right-thinking Vincentian, any nation builder. Because we knew Mr. James very well and we knew Gonza we know Prime Minister Gonzalez very well. So it's, it's quite um, easy to, to arrive at the conclusion that um, these two individuals are they stand uh, as some of our most senior defenders, defenders of our our integrity as a nation, our freedom, and again in the month of Heritage Month, they are our heroes. Whether they are with us or they are, they have departed. As in the case of Mr. James, we have to recognize and celebrate them for the heroic work 
that they do on a daily basis or that they have done throughout their lives, as in the case of Mr. James? Well, we have members of the Royal St. Vincent and the Grenadines Police Force, uh, officers on standby, and uh, uh, fairly soon we'll be seeing the official pallbearers uh, moving into the House of Assembly to uh, remove uh, the body of the late uh, Charles James. Moments ago, we saw on, on screen uh, granddaughter uh, signing the book of condolence. Indeed, the family, they would have um, come in directly and immediately went to the casket uh, to, to, to view the body. And some members now taking the opportunity to sign that book of condolence. We, uh, any moment now, we should be having, and there you go, uh, the official Paul Bearing party. And uh, they will remove uh, the casket bearing the body of a uh, former nominated member who served from 1974 to 1978 and then as a senator from 1979 to 1984 in the House of Assembly here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, the body of the late uh, Charles James and uh, the all bearers uh, certainly will be moving with precision as they've been doing uh, for the entire um, morning, so to speak. And uh, first of all, just wheeling the casket uh, towards the exit here at the House of Assembly. And uh, we'll ensure that that journey uh, will continue up to the Life of Ministries uh, church in New Grounds where the official funeral uh, will take place. And then here we saw on screen uh, Inspector of Police Dwight Rogers leading the or escorting the, uh, the pal bearers. Uh, he's right out front, uh, sashed with black, uh, well, sashed in black, and uh, six pal bearers. Accompanying the casket on on route to the house, the very sharp moves. And uh, now the casket uh, being lifted uh, to the shoulders of the pall bearers here, and. Uh, taking their time in doing so, but uh, very importantly, uh, maintaining their composure and ensuring um, that all is well as uh, the uh, now take that journey to the, to the hearse and uh, moving in, in, in slow time, if I can say. Exactly. Uh, Sean. Uh, Inspector Rogers uh, leading the way there. And, and no doubt, as we, for the last time, I have the body of uh, Charles James leave the House of Assembly here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. No doubt, uh, the community of New Grounds and surrounding areas, Cedars, Chapman's, yes, uh, they, they, uh, not the entire North Union area, Diamonds, uh, um, those, there'll be a number of individuals coming out to pay their last respects, uh, last respect. To this individual who lived a life of national service and community engagement and commitment and certainly uh, a standard bearer with respect to being a family man, husband, father, grandfather, friend. Notwithstanding the solemnity of the moment, again, it is uh, one to behold and to, to recall to active memory. And the Paul Bears are actually doing a fantastic job here this morning. Uh, the ease and precision that they have been moving with um, certainly Good work, you know, for, for the occasion, Sean. And it's, yes. uh, it's a lovely morning here uh, in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. There, there are a few clouds about, but yes. uh, 
the Vincentian flag is waving in the breeze, flying at half a mask, mask. In, in respect again of the occasion. Um, uh, it's just the symmetry, the coordination. Yes. By the pal bears, it's members of the Royal St. Vincent and the Grenadines Police Force. Yeah. Uh, So the rank, uh, if I recall correctly, the blue sash will indicate the uh, superintendent of police, uh, whereas the black uh, inspector. Um, so that's the hearse bearing the body of uh, the late Charles James, of course, uh, casket draped uh, with the national flag. And uh, that will remain there quite naturally until the journey ends at the cemetery. At that time, that flag will be handed over um, to the widow. To the widow, yes. Uh, at the moment, uh, we, based on the movement of the individuals there on the outside, we anticipate that the the procession is is uh, being formed in terms of the order, the outriders and and those who would accompany the casket out to new grounds. It's a relatively, it's a reasonable drive. It's about uh, 35 to 40 minutes or so. They're about, yes. Um, and with the assistance of the police outriders, of course, you would anticipate a, f- a smooth a smooth flow to new grounds and um, not only would, would, would our cameras uh, keep viewers uh, in tune and be able to track the, 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 the procession but also you would see the beautiful sights and, and, and sceneries of St. Vincent and the Grenadines along the Windward Coast um, and uh, for folks who have who were viewing from overseas, for many of them, I, I saw someone from, uh, from in the diaspora texting me a while ago saying they're viewing. You know, they get a chance to see their homeland um, via our lens as well. And that's true. get to appreciate, that's, you know, where they're from. Yes. Well, uh, any minute now, uh, the first bearing the body will leave uh, the compound of the House of Assembly here in Calico. Just ahead, we are seeing some members of the uh, cadets. And uh, I do believe that we do have that link uh, with BC3, uh, who will um, certainly be making the journey. It's a joint broadcast here this morning, Agency for Public Information and uh, the Vincent and Cultural Collection Channel BC3. Uh, collaborating on this one and uh, we're also live on NBC Radio uh, also available on our social media platforms of course on Facebook you can visit the pages of uh, VC3, API and NBC Radio and it's also available on uh, YouTube for persons who are very much interested in following the rest of the proceedings following the rest of this official funeral as uh, the people St. Vincent and the Grenadines and even more so specifically the people of South Central Windward a uh, bit farewell uh, to a statesman, a gentleman who would have served this country with distinction, uh, the late Charles uh, James. And that's well said, Denny. Uh, a service befitting that of a, a patriot. And the, the official viewing here this morning was Again, in keeping with the standards set in this country for, for, for an occasion like this, it was of a very high, high quality, high standard. And the, the behavior displayed by everyone, you saw the, the, the honor and the respect for the occasion and the movement of the individuals. But coming back to here on set and, and listening to some of the, the, um, the views shared by members of the James family, members of, the, of our National Assembly, members of Parliament, Honorable Curtis King, Honorable Sabuto Caesar, Honorable Augusta Stevenson, 
um, Honorable Frederick Stevenson, you, you got the sense that this man, Mr. James, he impacted a number of people beyond what I may suspect he may not have even been aware mm. of the level of his impact on people. But certainly, I won't be surprised if he appreciated that, if he anticipated it, because he was such a confident individual as well and such a knowledge, knowledgeable person that it would be easy to anticipate that, yes, of course, I knew I was going to have this kind of impact. That's why I lived my life that way. <laughs> um, you know, but um, it's really something that is it's worth emulating. And that's what I wanted to get to. It's, it's the kind of lifestyle you would like to emulate in terms of your impact on your country and your contribution to nation building. Very well said, uh, Sean, and um, uh, we will very soon uh, be seeing the Harris uh, leaving the compound of the House of Assembly here in Calicoa, and uh, we, our camera certainly will take you through the entire journey as uh, the procession will move all the way up uh, to New Grounds, and uh, and this is where we would uh, engage our seamless transition. Well, our seamless know. transition over to members of uh, our, our team, uh, the API VC3 team, as they make way out to new grounds at the, at the New Life Ministries. Well, Sean, certainly was a pleasure sharing uh, the microphones with you here this this morning. I think this is the very first time that we've worked together. Yes, actually, it's the first time. Uh, Same here as well. Certainly, it's been a pleasure. But we've been told that it's time for us to to wrap it up. All right. Well, again, before we go, thank you to everyone who has uh, viewed this uh, particular uh, coverage this morning. And please continue to view. Stay tuned. Uh, Follow the live all the way out to New Grounds and beyond onto the San Susi Cemetery. Um, it's been a pleasure sharing with you and we're happy to have had you. Those who are, if you're still listening on NBC Radio, it's also great having you. And we look forward to rejoining you uh, somewhere around 12.30 for the official uh, ride of the church service out at Newgrounds. Very well. Certainly a pleasure and uh, do continue to follow uh, what we are going to be sharing with you as we continue this official funeral uh, for the late Charles James. So from here, we hand over to our mobile crew. Uh, and you wouldn't hear from us for the day again, but it's been a pleasure. It's been my pleasure as well, then. Certainly. <laughs>